What's going on guys, Alex here, and today I wanna to do a quick video specific review on the Sony A5100, which I'm using to shoot with right now. I also wanna go over a couple of things that I've learned while using this camera to shoot videos from my other YouTube channel, Outdoors 55. Now I'm gonna actually link to all those videos in this video description. So I'll have a playlist set up, you can click on that link and you can go see all the videos that I've shot with this camera. Okay, so first things first, let's address the elephant in the room, and that is, does the Sony A5100 overheat? Yes, it does. The Sony A5100 overheats after five minutes of recording time, almost every single time. However, the good news is that the Sony A5100 overheats after five minutes of recording time, meaning that if the camera overheats, you can simply turn the camera off and turn it back on again, and you get another five minutes out of it. You can also hit the stop record button before your five minutes is up, immediately hit the record button again, and continue to get another five minutes of recording time. Now, I know this is gonna be kind of a uh, off-putting thing for a lot of you. If your plan is to set this camera up in the corner of a room and let it run for an hour, this is not the camera for you. However, there are some good things that come along with this camera, and that is image quality and the low light performance. The low lighting performance of the Sony A5100 is very good, even with the kit lens with a relatively small maximum aperture of 3.5. I previously bought the Sony HX80, which I had for a couple weeks and did a couple testing videos with, and I did not like the low lighting performance of that camera. I immediately went out, returned that camera, bought the Sony A5100, which has a much better low light quality than the HX80 did. The HX80 was even worse than my iPhone 7 Plus was, as far as low lighting goes. So you really do get really good low light performance with the Sony A5100. So here I am under much worse lighting conditions. I'm under this like carport lean-to type thing. I've got heavy tree cover. The sun's going behind the clouds and coming out again. Uh, the lighting conditions are all over the place. Um, one other thing that I want to tell you is I am actually using the uh, Zoom H1, I don't know if you can see that, to record my audio, exter audio externally. And what I'm going to do is switch back and forth between the in-camera audio and the Zoom H1 and maybe even my iPhone 7 Plus to give you an idea of how a phone compares to a camera, compares to an actual audio recorder. The lens stabilization's on, now we're going to go for a quick walk down through the woods. We are also going to be using the inboard microphone for this video. So lens stabilization's on. We're gonna go for a quick walk down here. Now I'm trying to hold this camera as steady as I can. I'm not great at shooting in this manner, but this is kind of what we got going. Spider web. I don't know if you can see that. So we're just kind of walking through the woods here, handheld. I'm doing the best I can to keep this thing stable. Um, you know, I'm not good at kind of doing the vloggy selfie stuff. Uh, most of my stuff's on a tripod, but occasionally I will walk through the woods and, uh, you know, I do hiking videos and that sort of thing with this. All right, so we're gonna make our way back up towards the house. All right, we're back up at the house. I'm going to turn the image stabilization or the uh, lens stabilization, I should say. I'm gonna turn that back off and we're gonna do the same test with the image stabilization off. So the lens stabilization is off. Now it's all gonna be handheld. We're gonna do a quick, do the same walk back and forth. Now, one thing I wanna uh, talk about with the autofocus is I have the autofocus and I tend to use the camera with the autofocus on the normal setting rather than the fast setting. The, the autofocus on this camera is very good. Um, it's almost too good in the, um, in the fast mode. There's three modes. You have fast, normal, and slow. And with this autofocus set to fast, it's almost faster than the human eye. It almost looks unnatural, I think. So most of my stuff is done with the autofocus set to the autofocus drive speed set to normal or slow. I think it gives a much more natural um, kind of focus pull on the subject. Now, forgive me if I'm using the wrong terminology. Um, I'm not a camera expert. I'm just a normal guy who bought a kind of advanced camera for doing YouTube videos. So keep that in mind. If I get the terminology wrong, I apologize. I'll try and correct it when I edit this, but 
I may miss something. All right, so this is something I should mention real quick, and that is the screen that I'm staring into right now can be very difficult to read when you're outside. That's why I'm staring at it, and I have no idea really what's going on because um, it has a glare on it, and it doesn't have to be in direct sunlight to get a glare. You can be um, kind of in a shadow. Um, you know where you get that, uh, you can kind of see what's going on, but you have that glare and you can kind of see the background. That's really what the screen looks like. So know that in outdoor conditions, the screen can be very hard to see, and this camera doesn't have a viewfinder, which makes it even worse. So here's something else to keep in mind. I don't know if you can see, my battery is at 9%. The battery life on this camera is not good, and actually, it's quite terrible. I would recommend, if you're buying this camera, to buy a minimum of two extra batteries. This camera does not come with a wall charger. All the charging takes place in camera, which means you're tying up your camera until your battery's charged, which takes about two and a half hours per battery. So minimum of two extra batteries with this camera, that gives you three total. And I would highly suggest buying the wall charger. I think Sony really needs to include an extra battery and a wall charger with this camera. Now, since we changed the battery out, I know somebody's gonna ask, does changing the battery out help with the overheating issue? And my answer and my experience is no, it does not. You cannot count on or rely on this camera to record reliably past five minutes. Five minutes is the maximum reliable recording time that you will get with this camera. Now, I know there's uh, some hacks going on around YouTube about how to get longer recording time out of this camera. I have not tried any of those hacks and right now I'm not really interested in any of those hacks because most of my takes are under um, five minutes in the first place. Most of them are even around one to three minutes in length. So, um, you know, extending the record time of this camera for me isn't really gonna help me that much. Okay, so just like that, my last take was two minutes and I'm done. I'm going to move on. Two minutes is the maximum amount of time that I record with this camera, so there you have it. We're gonna test the uh, touch to focus screen here real quick. I'm going to touch the tree, which it looks like it's in focus. It's hard to tell because the screen's all uh, kind of whited out due to the sunlight. Now I'm going to touch the tree in the background. And it looks like it is in focus. Now again, we're under terrible lighting conditions. We got heavy tree cover and the sun's going behind clouds and all kinds of stuff. So now I'm gonna touch the tree in the front. and touch the tree in the back. Now that's the autofocus drive speed set to normal. And it does a pretty good job. Okay, so we've got our focus set on this log here. I'm gonna touch somewhere in the background. We're not gonna touch on any specific thing. We're just gonna see what happens. And it comes into focus. Now we will touch the log again. and it's in focus. So one thing that I wanna say real quick here about the uh, Sony a5100 is that it does have a touch screen and I believe the Sony a6000 has a touch screen as well. That's something that the Sony a6300 does not have. And Sony, I have no idea why the heck you'd put a touch screen on the lower end models and not on the higher end model. It doesn't make any sense to me. I would buy a Sony a6300 tomorrow tomorrow if it had a flip out screen and a touch to focus screen, but it doesn't, so I'm not going to. So real quick, back to the overheating issue. Know that I filmed this entire video with this camera and I have not had it overheat once on me. However, most of my takes have been under five minutes. Actually, most of my takes have been under four minutes. I think if you are mindful about how long your individual shots are and how you film, or if you really look at how you film and kind of break that down and look at exactly what you need. I definitely wouldn't totally overlook this camera. I think you get a lot of bang for your buck with this thing for five to $550. It really does give a good HD image quality. It doesn't really come across on YouTube too well. Um, YouTube does all kinds of like compression to it. It really makes it look a lot worse than it does with the original file. So yeah, guys, I hope this video helped. Um, I'm open to video suggestions. If you wanna see something about this camera in particular, let me know in the comments and I'll try and make a video about it. Um, Within reason, I mean, I can't like go to Mars and shoot, you know, stuff on Mars with this camera. That's 
kind of out of the realm of possibility. But let me know what you think. Ask me any questions. I read and respond to as many comments as I can. However, sometimes YouTube doesn't notify me that I even get a comment. So if you comment and I don't respond back, it's because freaking YouTube didn't let me know that you commented. So I apologize for that. Again, I have a playlist set up of all the videos that I've shot using this particular camera. The link is in the description. It'll take you over to my other channel, Outdoors 55. In that playlist, I will have all the videos that I've shot using this camera. You can kind of browse around and uh, look at what this camera does in more realistic shooting scenarios. I have videos where I shoot inside. I have videos that I've shot outside. I have videos where I've shot um, in poor lighting and I have videos in great lighting. So it'll really give you a better idea, I think, of what this camera is really capable of. Hopefully this helps. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.